UFO researcher, former state senate candidate, and uh, award-winning pilot John Lear. Mr. Lear, it's nice to have you here again. Always a pleasure to be here, George. Um, to begin with, uh, we have this concept of the people from other planets as little green men. Um, are they green, from what you know? Uh, are they all the same, or we got different kinds of them? George, at least 70 different species, and probably more. But yes, uh, as odd as it sounds, there are little green men. That's not the ones we usually see, though. We see the little gray ones. They're about uh, four and a half feet tall. We see the ones that are called the Nordics. They're about seven feet tall, look like us. But they were invariably blonde hair and blue eyes. They're one of the species that we have on ice. One of their crashes we recovered. Obviously, with different species, they have different motives. I mean, are there, are there good aliens and bad aliens? Good aliens, you know, bad aliens, and all kinds of ways and reasons for interacting with us. And so what are some of the reasons? Why, why would they be? Uh, genetic experiments, uh, trying to... Uh, you know, there's a misconception here. People think that uh, our space brothers would bring us uh, good things and uh, teach us uh, how to get rid of all our diseases and... Uh, now, if you get the if you stop and think about it, that may not be the best thing. Because if you uh, had a, had a uh, society without any disease and everybody starts living 150 years, that creates a lot of problems. So uh, they would not meddle in that. You believe uh, in part that the movies uh, E.T., Close Encounters of the Third Kind, were not entirely just uh, the creative product of some Hollywood director that maybe there's more to that. Why don't you explain? They were carefully um, guided by representatives from MJ-12, who is this organization that is in charge of the cover-up, in order to get us ready for the release of the information that there are, are in the aliens. And uh, in both those movies, they used small little creatures and, uh, in order to get us ready for this uh, release of information. Uh, to prepare us that the idea that the Neville and aliens from outer space are going to help us out. Unfortunately, um, they're not so, they're not so benevolent. So they made a, probably one of the most disastrous mistakes when uh, E.T. was uh, put out. At that time was before we uh, discovered what I call the double cross or the grand deception. And uh, they were trying to get us used to the benevolent little creatures. But that isn't the case. Uh, why don't you take a couple of minutes? Uh, you've done as much research on, on UFOs as just about anyone, I'd imagine. And if you haven't done it, you know people who have. Where did it all start and uh, how we put this picture together of, of where they came from and why they're here? Well, the whole thing started in uh, July 2nd, 1947. That was the first crash. Uh, the first crash of an alien. An alien in a spaceship. July 6th is when they recovered it and sent it to Wright Patterson Air Force Base. July 7th is when they held the press conference uh, and told the people it was a weather balloon, which the press bought for Brian Sinker. Uh, September of that year, President Truman established MJ-12, and the purpose of that was to study the saucers and cover up the existence of the UFO. Now you say we've recovered alien bodies from that incident, right? or from that particular crash. And what they do with them? They autopsied them. Uh, Dr. Devlin Brock was the uh, chief uh, uh, surgeon, so to speak. He was the one that named it EBBs. That uh, stands for Extraterrestrial Biological Entities. Uh, and uh, we captured three live EBBs. Meaning there, they were uh, numbered in their order of capture. EBE-1, EBE-2, and EBE-3. Where did we capture? Where did this happen? Uh, in different crash. EBE-1 lived with Air Force Colonel between 1949 and 1952. Uh, he was scared. The EBEs are kept in an electromagnetic facility called a YY-2. Uh, it was designed by a Dr. Eric Wang, who was directly for Dr. Kissinger, who has been in this cover-up since the very beginning. The reason they had to create an electromagnetic facility is the fact that the EBEs are so advanced, they're, they're at least a half a billion years advanced from us, and probably more, they can move by thought. Move by thought, and they can also disappear. But they can't move by thought through an electromagnetic facility, so they built this facility. There was two, one in Los Alamos, and one either Edwards or up in Tessa, a Groom Lake, Nevada. A Groom Lake. Now there's still one EBE, uh, still living. Uh, EBE-3, and there was a videotape that eventually is going to be released to the public, and it's an interview with it. As hard as that may uh, sound, uh, sort of 